Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, we continue with part four of our Atari Tempest hacking session. In the last episode, we toured a buildable source file that we had created for Tempest and started modifying it. We'll continue that mission now, laying the groundwork for new levels and new color sets in the game. The less I talk up front, the more time there is for code to follow. So allow me to get out of my own way here so that we can get busy with Tempest. Here we go. Okay, alternate start table. Let's have a look at that. So there was never any plan to encourage or allow people to take this modified ROM image and run it in an arcade or in an actual environment. So I only ever do it if you can start on any level. So it's like a championship practice machine setup. The game plays exactly the same, but you're allowed to start anywhere. And with alternate start table defined, you'll be able to start on multiple extra levels that you previously could not. If it's the alternate start table, the custom one, I'm going to give you 60 seconds because you're obviously not in a rush. If you're in an arcade, 10 seconds, hurry up, make your choice, get on with it. You'll notice here, hey, these are hex values, 10 and 60. What are you doing, Dave? Like, hex 10 is 16. 60 is some big-ass number, like 96, right? Um, yeah. And that's because it's BCD. We have to talk about binary coded decimal math a little bit more later, but basically each digit is done independently. So 60 is 60 decimal, even though you write it as 60 hex. It's a little wonky. The reason is because each nibble, each four bit pair contains um, the digit. That way you can have three bytes of BCD information and it can be six digits worth of score, which this game does. We'll see that later on too, which is why it turns over a million. So if we want to fix that, we just need some extra digits of BCD. That's all BCD is. But if you're wondering, is this some amazing property of hexadecimal math that you can just do this and treat numbers that way? No, the CPU has to actually account for it. And when it's doing math, it has to do its carry differently and it has to do all kinds of weird things. So when it does math, it needs to know, am I in BCD mode or am I in regular math mode? That is done by setting the decimal mode flag on the CPU. We'll see that done later, both intentionally and maliciously. If you have an interrupt handler or like an NMI handler, the first thing you want to do is store the state of the decimal flag. So you want to save the state of the decimal flag and then set it to what you need it to be, which is normally non-decimal for an interrupt handler. Unless you're doing math visible to the user for some reason in an interrupt handler, whatever. You might have a reason, but generally you just set it to a known state, which is off. Say you're in the middle of some code like this that actually uses decimal mode and an interrupt fires, your interrupt code starts doing math. It's all wrong because decimal mode is on. So your interrupt or anything that just starts taking over and doing math. So if there is no alternate start table, this is the factory table. It is split into two sections, as I recall. This table is a set of words, which means four BCD nibbles, of what the score bonus value is for each of the starting level's targets. So the first starting level, which is level one, gets zero bonus. The next starting level, which is level three, gets 60,000 points bonus. At level five, it's, or it's, pardon me, it's 6,000. These are all measured in hundreds because there is another BCD two digits, zero, zero, after this that they're always zero, zero, so they don't even bother putting it in the table. But here's all the bonuses. They have to align with this next table. You'll see I have many more levels interspersed here, especially once you get up into the high levels. You can start on 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, anywhere you want, pretty much. And if we've added levels to the game, you can even go up and start on some of those. This next table indicates what level you can actually start at in each index of the table. For the ones that I added, I interpolated value if it was in between two old bonus levels. And then I just plateaued out. I never went any higher. I thought it was cheesy to like come up with, oh, we got an even bigger bonus. So for Dave's imaginary purple levels. Oh, no, this is actually for starting up in the green, but, you know, if you start in the green V, should I make up a number and say that's what the bonus should be? I guess I could, but I decided we'll just plateau out at 898. That's the highest bonus the system ever awards. I'm not going to make up my own rules, although I totally am, but I'm not going to make them up with scoring or with regard to scoring. Organization is something I spoke of earlier, and that is the ability to remove languages. Let's take a look at what that actually winds up doing. So here are all the French messages that we can remove. German. Spanish. So that's it. French, German, and Spanish languages. And we leave the English. And of course, you could invert that as you needed. For each of the text messages that appears in the game, the English language version is left alone, and the German, French, and Spanish versions are removed. And that's just simply repeated in each case of every message, of which there are probably 29 cases, I would guess. Finally, there's add level. 
What does add level do? It adds new levels to the game. Let's take a look. If add level is turned on, then we make changes to the highest level in the game, the last shape that is seen, the maximum level, and last green, which I need for a calculation other than last level. So if add level is defined, you can see the values are much higher. Levels 112, 113, and the last green stays at 96 because normally it stays green forever. We don't want it to stay green forever. We want it to change after level 96, the last green, and become purple. Everything after that will be purple. Here are the extra required entries in the bonus table. I put them all at 995,000 because this was a handy dandy test to add the next piece of functionality that I planned to add, which was additional digits to the score. Fix that. So if add level is defined, then you can start on level 97, 98, 99, 107, and 112. This was just a logic change that I had to keep consistent. Um, some of these tables make reference to when a change begins in the game, like when an enemy shot is valid or when uh, tankers can shoot, for example, and what start level that is and what last level that is. And so where they were at the last green, I changed that to be the last level. Many changes like that. Where we saw last green in the table, we now changed to 112. Ah, max level is 113, so I could have just done max level less one, max level less one. Not sure why I didn't. So again, these are just game parameter tables. So we lethal distance. I just for all of these things, I just pretty much went with either an extrapolation of whatever was going on. So if it was a value that kept going up to green, I generally increased a little bit if it made more sense. You know, be a little faster in the purple. But some things are just the same as green. So the number of enemy shots on the screen is going to be the same as green because there's really no room for more. Not no room in the screen, but no room in the tables. So it would require more changes to the code. And here you can see the actual color tables that I found in the code. Um, the sparkle bit, I never did figure out. I don't know if it was a hardware feature they were planning to add, but it just doesn't seem to make a difference to me and I don't see anything in the game. What I wound up doing was just using colors that made sense in the context of having the play field be a purple. And for most of that, I use the same colors as things that were blue. So you see a lot of duplication with the blue levels. Ah, uh -huh. and this is the very last change. When it's drawing the map of the level picker, it needs to know what color to draw the levels for. And so we have purple added in this one as well. This was the last bug, the last bug that it fixed because everything worked except the level picker entry was still green. I couldn't figure out why. And here was that piece of code. All right. Now, the next thing we want to look at are some bugs that are in the Tempest code, how some of the Tempest code actually works, some of the major functions, and how it looks, how it runs, and what it looks like with modifications. That's a nice logical point to stop at before we return next time to take a look at some of the more interesting particulars of the Tempest code base. In our next episodes, we'll look at the famous 40 credit bug that is now featured prominently in the book and the movie Ready Player One. We'll see what the code was actually trying to do and how it all goes wrong in a sinister spiral of self-destruction. We'll also take a look at some of the cooler parts of the source code, such as the advanced P-code execution engine, dispatch tables, BCD score math, and much more. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And because making videos about debugging Tempest is what they call narrowcasting, make sure to turn on the bell and personalize recommendations so that you get notified about future episodes. It'll also help to ensure that there actually are future episodes. If you found this video interesting or entertaining, and for some reason your thumbs up icon is still boring old gray, Please be sure to join the blue crew by liking the video and turning that thumbs up icon from boring old gray to happy shiny blue. Thanks and good night.